Alright guys and gals, let's talk about variables. Now a variable is a placeholder for a value, and it behaves as the value that it contains. Do you remember from either elementary school or middle school when we were working with algebra? We usually had to solve for some sort of variable like x or y, and x or y contained some sort of numeric value, and for all intents and purposes, this variable behaved exactly as this value. Well, with programming, we can perform something similar to that, but we are not limited to just numbers. We could also store words, whole sentences, and these things called Boolean values which hold either true or false. But if we're going to store a value within a variable, we have to list the data type of what we're planning to store within that variable. Is it going to be a number, a word, a Boolean? So we need to discuss data types. There are eight primitive data types and a special reference data type called a string. Anything that I have noted with a star is particularly important, so I would pay special attention to these. Our first data type is Boolean. This has a size of one bit, so it can only hold two values, that being true or false. If we're attempting to sign a Boolean value, we would type either equals true or equals false. Something similar would be, let's say we have a light switch program, well, if the light switch is on, we could say that the light switch has a value of true. If it's off, it has a value of false. So this is binary. That's why it only uses one bit. It only needs one bit of memory to function. Next, we have byte. This isn't as important as a few others, but with one byte, we can hold an integer number between negative 128 to 127 because a byte only has one byte of memory. A short has two bytes of memory, so it can hold a larger number between negative 32,000 and some change to 32,000 and some change. So integers, integers are important. These use four bytes of memory, and they can store a number to just under two billion to just over two billion because they use four bytes of memory. And a long, they use eight bytes of memory, so they can hold a very large number in fact, they can hold a number between just under negative 9 quintillion to just over positive 9 quintillion. Now a float, they can store a fractional number, specifically up to 6 to 7 digits. What makes floats different from these data types on the top here is that bytes, shorts, integers, and longs can only store a whole integer. They cannot store this decimal portion. So if you're working with a program or a variable that uses a fractional number, you'll need to use either a float or a double. And a double has more precision. It uses 8 bytes of memory, and it can store a fractional number up to 15 digits. So in comparison with a float, this has less precision than a double. And for an example, I just listed a few of the digits of pi. With this example, we can only store 6 to 7 digits of pi, but with a double, we can store up to 15. There is one strange convention with floats. If you're going to assign a value to a variable that's of the float data type, you need to follow the value with the letter F. With double variables, you actually do not need to do so, so that's one major difference when assigning values between these two. Now let's move on to characters, pronounced char for short. Think of Charizard. This uses two bytes of memory, and this will store a single character, letter, or ASCII value. An example would be the letter F, but a common convention with assigning values to a char variable is that you need to surround this value with a pair of single quotes. And our last data type is the string data type. The size really varies because these are reference data types. They store a sequence of characters, like a word or a sentence, you could store a single character within a string, but chars and strings behave differently because chars are primitive data types and strings are reference data types. So let's distinguish the difference between primitive and reference data types. Here's a super quick description between the differences of primitive and reference data types. Primitive data types, there are eight and we just discussed them. They are Boolean, Byte, Short, Integer, Longs, all those cool things that we just discussed. Reference data types like strings, well, there's an unlimited amount because they are user-defined. Primitives store data. Reference data types store an address. Primitives can only hold one value. 
Reference data types could hold more than one value. Primitives use less memory compared to reference data types, which use more memory. And primitive data types are faster compared to reference data types, which are slower. Now you're probably thinking, cool story bro, but how do we create a variable? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. So the first process with creating a variable is that we need to declare the data type of what value that this variable is going to store. So come up with a variable name like x and we will precede this variable with the data type of the value that we're planning to store within this variable. And then with all statements, we follow this with a semicolon at the end. The next step is called assignment. We will take our variable and assign it equal to some sort of value of the data type that we declared this variable to be. But you could combine steps one and two together, and this process is called initialization. We would take the data type followed by the variable name and set it equal to some value, and then add a semicolon at the end to finish the statement. So you can either do this in two steps with declaration and assignment, or combine them both together, which is initialization. How about we create a few variables? Does that sound good to you guys? So let's begin with creating an integer variable. Let's say int x. This step is called declaration. We are declaring the data type of what value is going to be contained within this variable. The second step is called assignment. We can assign our variable a value. Let's say x equals 123. And this step is called assignment. Or we could combine both of these steps together and this process is called initialization. int x equals 123, and this would be initialization. So we can do stuff with this variable. It will behave as the value that it contains. We could print this to the console window, so within a print or print line statement, we could print the value of x. So make sure you do not write this within quotes. Right now, this will display the value that is contained within x, which is 123, because this variable behaves as the value that it contains. If you were to surround this with quotes, what we are doing now is printing a string literal. You can also print text as well as a variable together. Let's say we have a sentence, a string literal that states, my number is, and then if we want to do some string concatenation with a variable, we would add plus and then the variable name. Make sure this is not within quotes. So this will display the sentence, my number is, plus our variable. And in the console window, it states, my number is 123. So with integer variables, the largest number that you can store within an integer variable is just over 2 billion. Let's say we are working with an extremely large number, like the amount of student debt that I owe. Well, this number is too large to store within an integer variable. We would probably want to use the long data type. And one convention with assigning values to a long variable is that you need to follow this number with a capital L for some reason. So we can now work with extremely large numbers. So this might be useful if you're working with numbers like the speed of light or something. So we now have a long variable and we can display this value. A few of the other data types that we mentioned were bytes and shorts. They have a lesser number that they can store. So with bytes, you can only store up to, I believe, 127. So we could store like 100 within here, and this would be fine, but 130 would be a little too much though. So we don't tend to use bytes and shorts too much as a beginner because it's just way more convenient to work with integers. Um, but you might use longs every once in a while too. But as beginners, we're mostly going to be sticking with integers. Now a double can store a number with a fractional portion. With integers, we cannot store a decimal portion. So if this was 123.01, well, we cannot store this decimal portion. We can only do so with a float or a double. So with a float, you would type in float for the data type. Let's create a new variable like y float y equals 3.14 and a common convention for assigning numbers well values to float variables is that you have to follow this with f so you can store a number with a decimal portion within a float or a double and then we could display whatever this value is so y is equal to 3.14 but people tend to use doubles more because they have more precision and then you do not need this f at the end 
So this will store up to 15 digits after the decimal portion. So we also have booleans. Let's say boolean z equals, this holds either true or false. And then we can display what value is within this boolean. So if we print our variable z, this will display false. Or we could hold true, and this will display true. But we can't display anything else besides those two. Like we cannot hold the word pizza because booleans only hold true or false. We have characters, char for short, char, and we don't necessarily need to come up with a variable that's only one letter. We could have a name or something that's descriptive for this. Let's say we have a variable called symbol. Char symbol equals, and then place a character within single quotes. Let's say we want the at sign. So we now have a variable called symbol that contains the at sign. So if I were to display this variable symbol to the console window, it will display the value that is contained within, which is the at sign. And lastly, we have strings. So with strings, these start with a capital S because they are of the reference data type. Anything that's a reference data type begins with a capital letter. And let's say we want to store our name. So string is the data type. Let's say the variable name is name equals, and to store a string, it works similar to a string literal. We're going to use a set of double quotes and display or add a bunch of text like my name. And then I can now display my name to the console window, or I could do some string concatenation too and display the word hello plus my name. And within the console window, it's now going to display hello bro. So that is everything you need to know to get started with variables in Java. I hope you find out this video useful. If you like it, then press the like button. Share it with your friends or anyone who wants to make his career in Java. Do you have any suggestions regarding the content? Comment section is all yours. This is the second part of this series. For more parts from this series, subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon. Thanks for watching.